this is Total Warhead, and in this video, I want to showcase how to utilize Defender Companions, aka Builder Skills, in a Total War Saga Troy. So, I had a bit of a hard time building these this guy, uh, because I was like, man, I'm trying to see how to best find the best combinations for his skills. And I think I found multiple specializations that you can build them for, and I'll touch upon them um, in summary now, and then go into detail. So... It, he is a very good uh, general for raiding uh, territories because he has Ambassador of Hermes with the upgrade starting cap, so you always begin fresh. So if you're on raiding stance, you actually start the battle winded, but with this skill, you will start fresh so you don't get that penalty, so you can be in raid stance as long as possible. Personally, I don't go into raid stance that much, so if it's something that you would like to do, then definitely combining Ambassador of Hermes starting cap with the Silpernarian and then um, the campaign movement and attrition skill or upgrade is good because you no longer incur movement penalties so you won't get penalized for movement and you will start the battles fresh. So it's a good combination for raiding with them. Now, aside from that, I like to perf or build this uh, general's army with the skills that I've selected for not utilizing a lot of skills that cause rage but mainly using skills that don't cause rage to really maximize my initial combat potential when doing ambushes or really pushing into the enemy. And because he doesn't have a lot of skills that upgrade uh, melee units and only one that upgrades missile units, he has good AoE abilities that will apply to mythical units. So you can keep boosting up the mythical units to make them good and you know be good in combat. And he has a lot of speed bonuses for himself and for units. So for example, if you have a lot of giant units, which don't tend to have very high speed. Actually, actually they might. <laughs> I can't remember. But you can definitely boost up their speed even further. And if you get a lot of centaurs, by boosting the speed of the centaurs in battle, you actually make them you know, even more deadly and dynamic to really flank the enemy. So let's go through the skills he has. The War Gods Call. He does not have access to Sunder, so this skill does not combine very well with, um, or this uh, ability does not have a good uh, skill that combines with it. So it's a good utility skill in case you need to pull an enemy towards him to then flank that unit to lower its melee defense and morale. As for the first skill, this one is a very difficult one for me to pick or decide which one to select. I went for a lead by example, but mainly because of the charge upgrade. It seems that there's a bug here. Because if you look at the upgrade level 1, it has two uh, retries, that, or you can use this skill twice if you look at the far right of the screen. If you go for the charge, it shows here that you can use it three times, but there's nothing that indicates in the upgrade text that you can use it three times. It just says that it's a charge upgrade. If you look at the morale upgrade, it actually cannot be utilized three times. It's only two, like the base level. So it appears that you get an extra use case of lead by example, and this skill lasts for 90 seconds, and the charge bonus um, that you get is plus 10. Not a, not a percentage, at a base, plus 10 charge bonus, which is great. The moment your unit's engaged, they're going to get plus 10 melee attack and plus 10 weapon damage, which is really good. And this skill has a 100 meter AoE, which is disgusting. So this is very good if you want to use your army to really win the battles really fast. Just like jump on them, inflict damage, and take them out. He does have a skill that gives him more ambush um, percentage of success chance, and he can boost up the charge of units and melee attack of units when ambushing. So this this skill combines very well with lead by example. Now, if you don't, if you're not building your army to really take out the enemy very fast, I would always tell you to go for reinvigorate because getting plus thirty six percent more stamina with this upgrade is insane. Like this is this is gonna bring you up probably two stamina levels, which stamina affects a lot of your unit statistics. So I would say if you're going for blitzing round, you know, pound the enemy really fast, ambush him, go for lead by example. If you think you're gonna use this army for prolonged engagements, reinvigorate is a better skill to go for. Note that skill uh reinvigorate does cause rage to utilize 40, while lead by example does not. So you might wanna pick skills that boost up rage in combat and outside of it because right now i didn't select any of them since the only skill that i will get that cause rage is the last one hallowed ground which i'll touch upon later so let's go about how i would build this army for ambushing 
and mainly for, you know, benefiting mythical units. Lead by example, definitely with a charge bonus upgrade. The way of Hermes, because I want this guy to be on a chariot. Because I want him to be as close as possible to all units to give this boost, flank the enemies to, you know, apply the morale penalty. And since I want him on a chariot, the base magnitude of speed is higher than when he's on foot. So giving him more battle speed is really useful when he's on a chariot. Aside from that, I don't go for Drill Expert. I would go for Ambassador of Hermes and I would go for both fatigue reduction upgrades. I think in total, this reduces fatigue reduction or fatigue loss by 30% combined. I forgot what I saw in the game files, but this is absolutely phenomenal to go for both of these. If you're going to raid, you already told you what you should do. I would go here for stalwarts since I don't tend to raid that much. And I will go for the line of sight uh, bonus so I can see more in the map, which is always extremely important information to have. It is extremely underrated. Then I would go for prayer of Athena to boost up the melee defense of all units in siege battle. So this is probably the only one that you can get to boost up units, uh, the stats of units in general. So if you get, for example, a bunch of armored giant spearmen, you can help them out with good melee defense by acquiring this. Then aside from that, I would get Bloodthirst in order to gain a bit more rage so I can pop the Hallowed Ground with more, you know, uh, faster in the battle. Then I would go for Favor of Asclepius because I would go for a Relakian Throw, but I can't use it if my unit is mounted and I want him to be on a Chariot to have mobility because he doesn't have a lot of stat bonuses to make him sustain very well in melee. So I would go here for Favor of Asclepius to help boost up the HP of my own units as I keep boosting them up with other statistical bonuses. Aside from that, I will go for Asclepian's method to boost up casualty replenishment. Hair of Dolos so he can get stock. A chariot with stock. That is disgusting. You can get really close to the enemy to be able to flank them so the enemy does not have time to readjust and therefore you can apply some good penalties on them. And then I go for Chosen of Hermes because I really don't go for extra morale bonuses. You can get really high morale as it is in the game towards the late game. So Chosen of Hermes is really valuable, especially if you go for very fast units to really boost up their speed even further, like a lot of Centaur units. Then Master Ambusher for the extra bonus when ambushing. And then here I would go for Reinforced Melee Chariot so he can get into the enemy and round and pound them with ease. And then finally, Hallowed Ground here in order to get a good amount of um, melee defense of plus 15, which is really good magnitude increase. You can combine this with the extra charge bonus so you can get really good initial contact on the enemy and then good sustainability if you stay engaged when you get the hollow ground popped off. I wouldn't give him divine challenge because he does not get a lot of damage resistance, AP damage bonuses, a, you know, general statistical bonuses for this general are not there. So I don't really see a purpose to give him divine challenge. He does not get as many statistical bonuses to say that he would do good in a divine challenge. So hollowed ground would help him be more of a companion general and really boost up the statistics of his own units. So I believe that is it here for all the bonuses that I would give to this hero. Basically a good ambushing, speed boosting, um, mainly focusing for mythical units is what I would call it. Really good for raiding. And he can also either boost up stamina with really good magnitudes. Or if you want to really do blitzes really fast with ambushes, then lead by example is a skill to go for. Anyways, I really want to thank you for watching. And I sincerely hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.